Today's video is about Voronoi diagram. This is the typical Voronoi diagram. Let's talk about the terms first. In a Voronoi diagram, you could see the points. We call those points is a size. We call the polygons containing one side. It's a cells or regions. The line separate two sides. We call this is a edges or boundaries. And the intersection of edges, we call this is a vertices. Each edge is a perpendicular bisect line between two sides. For this Voronoi diagram, we can answer the following questions. Where is the best place to open a new restaurant to steal competition from another restaurant? We will solve this kind of problem next class. Second one, if a city has several hospitals with a helicopter, what's the service area of each helicopter? Suppose in this uh, Voronoi diagram, each uh, site uh, stands for a hospital with a helicopter. For hospital D, the service area will be this uh, polygon, means uh, this uh, cell. So any emergency from uh, this uh, cell will be covered by hospital D. The third question, if I know how much it has rained in several locations, how can I estimate the rainfall in other nearby locations? We call this kind of problem is a nearest neighbor interpolation problem. What's the interpolation? When you use the value of a known site, to predict the value of an unknown point. That is the interpolation. The nearest neighbor interpolation problem in Voronoi diagram is to use the value of the site to estimate the value of a point in the same cell. If the point is on the vertex, you will take the average of the value of all the sites which have the same distance from the vertex. In this class, we will talk about this application of a Voronoi diagram. Let's go to example one. A company has many rainfall collection points in two of their areas. This is area one, this is area two. For each area, they already have four collection points. They want to add a, a fifth. The original points are shown as a, a to D in the following diagrams, and a new point is labeled a, E. Create a new cell for E according to the given information for the area one and a two. For area one, this is a new site E. So for each cell, we have uh, vertices. How you find the vertices? Remember all the vertices uh, are the intersection of uh, different uh, perpendicular bisector line. In other words, all the vertices uh, are located uh, on the edges. Therefore, you just need to check the intersection of uh, edges, then that will be the vertices. Around this E, you could say this is an intersection. Here is an intersection. This is an intersection. Then this is an intersection. Then you just need to connect these two intersections. Then this will be the new cell for the point E. Let's go to area two. This is a new site E. On the graph, you could say 
the perpendicular bisect line between E and C. Then find the intersection of uh, edges. We got the two vertices. Then here we got another vertices because uh, this line is a perpendicular bisect line between D and uh, E. So we just need to draw the perpendicular bisect line between A and E. You could say this is a midpoint. So we just need to draw this line, the vertical line, and intersect over here. Then connect this two. That's the cell we created for the site E. When you create a cell for a new site, you just need to figure out the vertices. The vertices are located on the edges. Basically, it's the intersection of perpendicular bisect lines between two sides. Now let's go to B. It's given that on a day the reinforce in the area 1 is recorded as this. Use the nearest neighbor interpolation to give an estimate for rain that fell at a point with the coordinate 5 or 4. 5 or 4 is here. This is the cell for the site E. For number one, before point E was uh, added, before point E was uh, added, you could uh, say 5, 4, this point, it's uh, located uh, in the cell containing D. So we got to use uh, the data for station D to estimate uh, this uh, point. The D will be 19 millimeters because uh, the distance from uh, the point uh, 54 to the site D is the shortest compared to all other sites. After point E was added, you could say this uh, coordinates 54 is in the cell containing site E. Therefore, we got to use uh, the data of uh, location E. That is uh, 21 millimeters. Go to C. This is the data for area 2. We still use the nearest neighbor interpolation to estimate the point with coordinate 5, 2. 5, 2 is located over here. For this point, basically it's on the edge between A and B. So before the point E was uh, added, you got to use the average between A and B values. A is 9, B is uh, 11. So you get the 9 plus 11 over 2, that equals uh, 10 millimeters. After Point E was added. You could say this point uh, 5 or 2 is uh, in the cell containing E. Therefore, we got to use uh, the data for site E. That will be 12 millimeters. Then they ask you to estimate the point P in the diagram 
before point E was uh, added, you could uh, say P is uh, the vertex. Therefore, you go to use uh, the nearby sides uh, around uh, P. That's uh, C, A, and uh, B. The value for P will be the average of the values uh, in sides uh, A, B, and uh, C. A is 9, B is 11, C is 14. Then you divide it by 3 equals 34 over 3 millimeters. For number 5, after point E was added, you could say previous uh, vertex P is uh, in the cell containing E. Therefore, you go to use the data for E, that is uh, 12 millimeters.